in this video we're gonna cover your professional image I strongly believe this is a very 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 strong topic you need to pay attention to it because it will help you tremendously so the first thing is there is a famous study by Albert Meharabian that state that the words that you use actual word not tone or inflections account for only seven percent of the imprint you leave in your audience mind the rules state that your words account for seven percent so tone and voice account for 38 percent and body language account for 55 percent of the imprint you make on your customers your professional appearance appearance says a whole lot about you before you even say your first word. Think about it. Before even you say a word, the way you look and you present yourself say a whole lot about you. So professional appearance matter a great deal, especially in sales. Your appearance is a form of nonverbal communication and one that speak very loudly. So good appearance either evokes a positive feeling or a negative thoughts. It's, there is no in between. Your professional presence has everything to do with your appearance, behavior, communication skills, and digital footprint. Now, poor appearances will accentuate your prospect confirmation bias. If you don't look the part, chances your prospect won't take you seriously and will dismiss you along with your product and services. You see, professional appearances give you confidence as a human being. By being your best, you eliminate all distractions and people tendency to question your ability to perform your job. So, looks do matter. Many assumptions are made within the first seven seconds you shake someone's hand. My friend, Sylvie Di Giusto, speaker and author of the best-selling book called The Image of Leadership, which I highly recommend, said that during the seven, the seven second, seconds your customer will make multiple assumptive a judgment about you. Your customer will hazard a guess about your background, potentially level of education, your professionalism, trustworthiness, and likability. You see, to quote, I will say, human evolution has prepared our ancestors to quickly make a judgment whether someone is a friend of a foe or a foe an asset or liability someone to accept in the group or chase away coat so yes you will be judged quickly and surely the key is to be prepared to leave a first impression because you won't have a second chance to do so how to leave a good impression, or at least first impression, let me give you some tips here. There's mainly three I want to share with you at this point. First, have a really genuine smile. Don't fake it, don't even try. A smile, smile the way a child would. Your customer will feel the authenticity and energy that your smile conveys. There is absolutely nothing worse than putting a cheesy grimace that reflects your nervousness and discomfort with your customers. I learn to put in the same genuine smile that I use when I hug my son every day. You can think about your own, someone that you care for dearly and think about that smile you project and use the same method. A sincere and authentic smile opens doors that word will never be able to. So building trust and rapport start from your first eye contact. 
So try put an effort, genuine, warm, confident, a professional image out there, starting with a real smile. Second element, especially in sales, very important, a solid handshake. I mean with that, a good handshake. Reflect your confidence, professionalism, and warmth. A handshake is an art form because you don't want to be too firm nor too soft. Your handshake needs to convey the following. I am reliable, I'm courteous, and I'm easy to work with. And I'm here to do business along with getting to know you personally. If there are several people, shake everyone's hand in a manner that conveys your confidence and attractiveness. Do not ignore anyone as people might take offense and sabotage your effort. And by the way, you never know who's the decision maker nor who is the most influencer within the group so just be do across the board show that you really care and during the introduction if it is the first time you're meeting your customer or a group of people simply introduce yourself while shaking their hands by saying something like simple like hi i'm anthony anthony cheney wait for them to introduce themselves then add something like, I'm delighted to meet you. Connecting a friendly face with a name is always a good start. And it lays out the ground to start a conversation. Additionally, clarity. Make sure that every word that you say is well thought out because you will be evaluated whether you like it or not, and judge upon what you say. So what you say, whether you want it or not, it will be part of how people will judge you. The first few minutes of your conversation either cement to destroy the preconceived idea that your customer forged during the first seven seconds of your meeting. So speak clearly in a friendly, competent, and confident manner that portray your expertise, knowledge, authority, as well as, as self-assurance. Ask smart questions and start listening attentively and closely without interruption. Your goal is to study your customer verbal and non-verbal body language which give you the opportunity to begin mirroring their approach to build trust. Pay attention to eye contact. It's very important. Making eye contact with your customer build trust. Do it in a reasonable manner that creates a good report. Furtive eye movement might be interpreted as lacking confidence or guilty while staring is perceived as creepy. So you don't want to stare at someone, nor you want to put your eyes down. You're looking down at the ground. It looks like you have something to hide. The key here is the right balance. Lock eyes with your customer for about two to three seconds, then shift gently to allow the customer to look back at you. When it comes to appearance, if you dress poorly, you might find yourself in a position where your customer dismiss your credibility right away and you have absolutely no chance of getting it back. So you cannot portray yourself as a professional salesperson and, and a competent salesperson without really looking the part. Like it or not, you will be judged and your appearance will tell a story about you. You are either trusted or you will be rejected. Your appearance have a huge impact on your customer, period. Accept it. How about grooming? Grooming matters a great deal, as well as everything else we cited. So avoid offensive breath. I see it sometimes, some people is just like, oh my God. That shouldn't happen. I've seen people talking they have yellow teeth or simply too much cologne. Remember, some customer cannot support cologne. 
So put yourself in their shoes. That's what empathy is all about. Or smelling like a stale smoke. Or having dandruff in your head. Or having using fake tanning. Or I seen some uh, sometimes women having extremely long nails. Or unclean nails. Or piercing in the eyebrows. Or nose or tongue. That's fine if that's what you want to do. But if you're in, your se in sales and trying to project a professional sales demeanor probably won't help you. If you work in a tattoo parlor, I can understand it. But if you try to project yourself as a sales pro professional, probably won't help you that much. I've seen and had to privately address it myself with several sales people because I want to help them. And I look at it from a perspective of both buyer and seller. So don't allow, allow these controllable items to stop you from your potential and your success. Your grooming says a lot about you, believe it. When it comes to behavior, the total sum of your action, that's what behavior is all about. It's really your attitude, to uh, how you relate to people. How you understand, how you influence, how you inspire people to take positive steps that will improve your collective lives. That's really, behavior is important. You gotta pay attention to everything around your behavior. It really make a difference uh, whether you succeed or you fail in the, in the profession of sales. When it comes to communication, effective communication, you should know, is an essential business tool and a critical personal attribute. It need to be clear, concise, and persuasive. If you can accomplish these three things, you're a good, effective communicator. Be clear, be concise, and persuasive. Finally, that brings us to the last segment, which is the digital imprint. It's something most of us do not really think about it, but it's important. Your online reputation is just as important as your physical or community reputation. You need to protect and improve it continuously. Your digital reputation is often the first thing customer research before they contact you. So please protect it because once your digital reputation is tarnished, it is pretty difficult and costly to repair the damage. Your online brand should be as clean as your brand offline. I certainly hope that you enjoyed this video.